Hey everyone, Sackface here, bringing you guys the second installment of Top 10 Mistakes New Medicine Players Make. I was really happy with the feedback with the first one, a lot of people wanted a part 2. So yeah, just made a comp compilation of uh, 10 more mistakes I feel like I see a lot of new players make and I've definitely made all these mistakes or been confused about all these in the past, so hopefully you guys learned something new today. Okay, I think everyone their mom knows this one, but we're gonna go through it just in case. Seagok, simultaneous effects go on chain. Just refers to when two or more cards activate at the same time. Thus, you as the player get to construct the chain how you want to. And the most common example in Edison format is Blizzard and Whirlwind. So if I were to summon Blizzard here, I can declare which card I want to activate first as Chainlink 1, Blizzard or Whirlwind. So let's say I want to play around Bottomless. Uh, it's relevant because if I declare Blizzard as Chainlink 2, so, declare Roland as Chainlink 1, Blizzard Chainlink 2, Chain resolves backward, Shura gets special summoned, and then Roland resolves. So I would just search card here. My opponent cannot activate Bombless Trap Hole, because the last thing that happened is the Roland uh, resolving, not the Shura being summoned. So, constructing your chain like this plays around cards like Bombless and Torrential. However, my opponent could have Royal Oppression. So, if I constructed the chain how I did, Roland Chainlink 1, Blizzard Chainlink 2, Royal Oppression, Royal Oppression could be activated as Chainlink 3. But if I did it the other way around, Blizzard Chainlink 1, Roland Chainlink 2, well that plays around Oppression because the f because the Oppression must respond as Chainlink 3, and since Blizzard is Chainlink 1, Oppression can't respond to it since Roland is now chain blocking it. So just a neat thing to be aware of, especially when you're playing Blackwing and having Roland Blizzard interaction. I can't believe I have to go through this one, but it happens way more often than it should. And I probably should have included it in my Gores video, but I'm going to go through it here. Gores actually has a second effect that a lot of people forget, and it's with effect damage. So in the most common scenario is when your opponent drops Caius on you. They target your monster. So it gets banished, and now I no longer have any cards on the field. So I take a thousand damage, and then I can drop Gores. And then I can make Gores second effect to inflict one thousand damage back. So, uh, yeah, a lot of people forget about it, and it's it, it's definitely game breaking in some situations. You can literally straight up win from the effect damage, or just drop Gores early and save yourself a bunch of damage too. So yeah, just. Definitely something to watch out for, especially against Kai, since Kai banishes your monster, so then you no longer have any cards on the field after. A concept that a lot of new players don't understand is about destruction and about when destruction is unsure. And I think that's easily showcased here in this interaction between Snipe Hunter and Stardust. So if Snipe Hunter were to declare its effect, just discard a random card. Stardust actually can't negate Snipe Hunter here. Because you don't know if Snipe Hunter is going to roll a 1 or a 6. If Snipe Hunter rolls a 1 or a 6, then the target isn't destroyed. So since the destruction is unsure, you actually can't activate Stardust Dragon in this scenario. So a more common example of that would be versus a card like Deck Devastation Virus. So let's say my opponent activates Deck Dev, and I have a Goblin Zombie set. But because Goblin Zombie is set, uh, the destruction is unsure. Like the game doesn't know yet if... Uh, the Goblin Zombie is going to be destroyed. So, because the destruction is unsure, I actually cannot activate my body as a shield here. Obviously, if Goblin Zombie was foot face up and this happened, then I could my body for sure. But because it is face down, the destruction is unsure. So, in this case, I would not be able to activate my body. Uh, course gets tributed, and then my Goblin Zombie and Tomato in my hand would be sent to the graveyard. Now going over some turn player priority, this refers to, this isn't the same as summon priority where you can use an ignition effect after summoning a monster. This is just referring to general like player priority and I think a really easy case of showing this is uh, my opponent has trapped shoot set and obviously it's my turn and I'm about to draw for turn and I'm in draw phase. So say I don't know it's set but I want to play around it. I can retain turn player priority here and activate MST before they have a chance to do anything. 
So right here I can just MST away the Dushu. But let's say I don't do that and I'm not thinking to play around Dushu here. So this is my hand. This is why when you have Dushu, you should wait till your opponent goes to standby phase. So now that I've gone to standby phase, I've shown the intent to give away my per player priority. Like I haven't done anything and I didn't do it. I didn't want to do anything in draw phase. So they could say, hey, when you attempt to leave draw phase, because I went to standby phase, they could say, hey, when you attempt to leave uh, draw phase, because I've given, I've shown the intent to give them a priority, they can dust shoot me now. And I have no chance to play around this MS or play around the dust shoot with MST. I could chain MST, but the activation requirement for Dushu's already been met. So in this case, like, say they had another back row and I want to chain it, sure I could chain it, but they still get to see the rest of my hand and put a card back. Another case of turn player priority is, uh, since the turn player priority has the option to do any action at the beginning of each phase, let's say I have DDV in Sirocco, so I wanna, my opponent, it's my opponent's turn, and they enter standby phase, and they bring back Treeborn. Well, in my head, I'm like, hey, I want to deck dev this Treeborn to prevent them from summoning a Monarch. But I obviously don't want to do it in standby phase or else Treeborn can just come back. So I'm thinking, hey, when they enter in main phase, uh, I want to be like, hey, beginning of main phase, deck dev, uh, tribute my Sirocco and get rid of this Treeborn Frog. However, it's my opponent's turn, so they have turn player priority. So before I can even do anything, they must pass turn player priority. So in this instance, they can just go beginning of main phase, do any action. So they can just summon their monarch before I even have a chance to deck dev. So if I wanted to deck dev, I would have to do it in uh, before main phase. So I have to do it in standby phase. So unfortunately, I can't. There's no window for me to play around the Treeborn. I, they, they'll get Treeborn Frog in this instance regardless. Uh, we all know Oppression's a broken card, but it's even more broken uh, in terms of what it negates. So the three main examples I have with this is uh, Starlight Road, Future Fusion, and Macrocosmos. All these cards, they have a special summon effect. So Oppression can actually negate all three of these on when they activate. And but not only do they negate the special summon effect, they also they just negate it, oppression just negates the whole effect. So if I were to if my opponent activates Star Road, I can chain oppression. Not only do they not summon Stardust, but the whole card is negated, so they actually don't negate whatever destruction they're trying to negate. For Macrocosmos, uh, even though 99.9% .9 of the time no one is summoning Helios, the primordial sun, oppression still can negate Macrocosmos because of that. And for Future Fusion. Uh, you can negate Future Fusion on Future Fusion activation. So if you have Oppression, they activate Future Fusion. You can negate Future Fusion. It's worth noting though that if Future Fusion is already face up and the second standby phase has passed and the opponent attempts to special summon whatever card they declare with Future Fusion, that actually doesn't start a chain. So you actually can't Oppression the monster that's being special summoned off of Future Fusion if Future Fusion is already resolved. So it's just worth noting that. So here we got a pretty simple interaction. It just involves uh, Battle Fader or Plague Spreader versus Caius. So if I were to summon Caius here, and I target either Plague Spreader or Fader, they both have the clause uh, banish it when it leaves the field. So if I were to get banished, let's just say I target Battle Fader. Um, Battle Fader actually leaves the field on its own accord, and so would Plague Spreader. So because of that, you actually don't get to burn the opponents for a thousand. This comes up a lot for some reason. A lot of people get this uh, confused, so I just wanted to clarify here. I'm not sure what to call this misconception, but it has to do with summoning priority. So I think it's most easily exemplified in this scenario when the player attempts to make Bryonic here. So the player goes Sync Goblin Zombie and Plague Spreader for Bryonic. And normally you would have player priority here to declare Bionic effect. You can just pitch a card, target, whatever. But in this case, uh, Goblin Zombie is a mandatory effect. So Goblin Zombie is actually going to trigger as chain link one here on Bionic summon. So there's two things uh, regarding priority here. One, Bionic is ignition effect. 
obviously. Well, that's the only way you care about player priority. It's not like Black Rose. Because if it was Black Rose here, it would just be Goblin Zombie chain link 1, Black Rose chain link 2, and Black Rose just blows up the field. But Bionic is an ignition effect. So ignition effects are spell speed 1. So obviously you can't use in the ignition effect uh, after chain link 1. It's spell speed 1. And uh, 2, Goblin Zombie is forming, is starting a chain, so your opponent has a chance to respond to Goblin Zombie. So in this case, if my opponent has Bombless, uh, well, what would happen is Goblin Zombie is chain link 1, and then Brian, or I'm sorry, Bombless is chain link 2, so Bryonic just gets banished, and you have no chance to call priority with Bryonic, so you don't get Bryonic's effect at all. You still get Goblin Zombie search, obviously, but you don't get Bryonic's effect. And it's the same thing with cards like Sangan, Dandelion, whatever, when they're effects are mandatory. Now I want to talk about summon priority. So obviously everyone knows about summon priority. Say I were to normal summon Greffer here, I could call priority and pitch malicious, right? And then I could dump another dark monster to the graveyard. However, um, because in this case, say they have my opponent has DD Crow, uh, they could they could crow my malicious during as chainlink two here, uh, since pitching for malicious is cost. But if I wanted to play a round crow, I could use priority to my advantage. So let's say uh, let's reset the scenario. This is in my hand. It's in my hand. If I really want to make malicious resolve and play a round crow, I could use Greffer's special summon effect. And then Malicious gets sent to Graveyard as cost. And here, Greffer is summoned. So now I have player uh, priority on the summon on the summon to use Ignition effect. So cards do not have priority. Players do. Just want to be very clear about that to use an Ignition effect. So I don't have to use Greffer's Ignition effect just because Malicious was... Or just, sorry, just because Greffer was summoned. I can actually use priority to declare Malicious effect. And since Malicious banishes as cost, um, this would be chain link one. Uh, my the opponent no longer has the uh, ability to crow Malicious, so Malicious will resolve in this case. Now let's talk about another cool way to use uh, player priority uh, during a normal summon. Say my opponent has dupe lock and I have torrential set, and my graveyard has. It doesn't have to have all these. It, it just has to have an ignition effect. It could be just Soroko Bayou. Plague or malicious doesn't matter. Point is, there is an ignition effect in the graveyard. I could use player priority here to my advantage to make two frog miss timing. I could normal summon anything. For this example, I'm just gonna use Edie Crow, and then call priority here. Let's just say I declare value uh, priority when I summon Crow. So value is chain link one. I could use torrential as chain link two. So torrential blows up the board. Chain resolves backwards. These all go bye bye, and then Bayou gets activated. So then Bayou gets activated. Chain link one, Armageddon, or I'm sorry, Armwing gets summoned. So then uh, since the last thing to happen is Armwing being summoned. Dufrog misses timing here, and I feel like this is a scenario that should happen relatively often and is available that people don't really think about. So yeah, I just want to put that out there as another way to use player priority to your advantage. And another really big mistake I see new players miss a lot is in this scenario, uh, you have Stardust and a back row like Bombless or MST, basically something that can trigger Stardust. Players don't really think about it because they're, it's, it's not intuitive to negate your own cards, but this happens a lot. The opponent summons Caius or something like Bryonic, basically something that is going to target your Stardust and remove it from the field. A lot of players will activate Bombless here, and what ends up happening is they'll just banish, Stars gets banished, and then Kaius gets banished. But what you could do instead of letting Kaius resolve is you could use Kaius, Kaius happens as chain link one, and then your Bombless happens as chain link two. You could use Stardust as chain link three. Stars negates your Bombless, so yes, the Kaius lives, but your Stardust dodges Bombless here, and then end phase. Of course, your stars comes back, and you'll just run it over next next turn on your on your turn. So just something to consider. A lot of people miss this. You could do that something with MST. I could have MST here instead of Bombless to target Stardust, and then maybe even chain Bombless as like chain link four. 
so I dodge and kill Caius. There's just a lot of things uh, you can do with Stardust when you have back row that's like chainable so stars can dodge things. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. Uh, if you like this type of content or just like Edison form in general, please consider subbing. I'll be doing my best to make more and more of this type of content for you guys. Thank you.